Hello, I'm Mark Fenlon, the founder of Mark Audio. Taking time today to present the new design of mine, which is the Alpair 11 MS. Now, MS stands for mono suspension, and I'll go into more detail about that in a little while. But first, let's cover some basics. Starting at the top of the driver, or the front of the driver, we've got the frame. This frame is a mix of glass fibre weave and polycarbonate material. That makes it particularly rigid and strong. The depth, the mounting depth, is only 4mm, so it's very easy to recess or surface mount. There are five fixing points. We supply the screws, and when we turn the driver over, you can see there's a nice wide mounting area which makes life easy to get a good seal into the box. We also supply the EVA gasket. The frame design itself is nice and wide to allow plenty of low and medium uh, sound, uh, sound generated airflow into the box for, uh, for, for really good acoustic efficiency. Now, I'll just turn the driver back that way. Hopefully you can see, uh, get a good idea of the look of the unit and indeed if I place a pen on the top of the cone immediately immediately you can observe the very shallow cone profile in fact from a distance it almost looks flat just a few millimeters gap between the bottom of the pen's face and the top of the dust cap the profile of the cone is really interesting this is what we call a negative camber profile starts out in this direction, opens out like a petal, gets to about this position here and then goes back on itself. It inverses. The advantage we get is we create a plus 180 degree arc of dispersion, particularly useful for creating a nice wide and sweet central stereo image. So if you are a little bit off-center when you're listening to your speakers, you'll still get a very nice central stereo image effect. Now, the actual material of the cone, I'm often asked this question, and uh, it is a complex aluminium magnesium grade, mixed grade alloy. We need these complex alloys because the cone has to do a lot of work, particularly on a single suspension unit like this. And you can go and look up these grades. They range from what we call the 5000 series right through to the 7000 and 8000 series. And depending on the particular use, individual grades are made to suit a specific purpose. But they're all involved typically in aviation and aerospace and indeed in other areas where uh, high, de high load demands on the material are required. Now, Moving on to the, the other feature, probably the main feature, which is the single suspension. Here it is, it's the front surround. Again, it's a complex four mix of synthetics. It's not rubber. People do ask me that. No, it's not rubber. It is in fact a very, uh, uh, it, it takes several stages to make this material before we can even form it. You might notice that the shape of the, of the, uh, of the underhung suspension section, that's this sort of U-shaped section here, again tucks back on itself. There's a, there's a, you can feel a ridge here and under here. That's very specific because this driver has no rear suspension, so this front suspension has to do all the work of keeping the powertrain, that's the coil and the cone, in position within the coil gap, within the motor assembly, and stop any lateral movement in any direction. You'll also probably notice it's particularly well damped. You can probably see that. So immediately for those observers who enjoy a bit of bass, yes, the answer is this, this single suspension driver is bass capable within reason. It's not a bass monster. If you're after a heavy bass sound, you should be looking at something like our CHN110 or a CHR120. Those four ranges are designed for those guys and girls who are looking for extended bass. 
but nevertheless a driver does have decent excursion and therefore will generate a base response uh, within a sensible power band. So let's move on to the reasons why we I've I've experimented and why I've produced single for single suspension drivers over the years. Well, the first thing to observe is there really is no spider. You can actually just note or just observe the top of the coil winding there. And if I give the uh, give the coil body a nudge, you can you can see you can actually see the the whole the whole powertrain move. And let me let me spend a minute or two with you on what a rear suspension look what a rear suspension looks like and what what a, a spider does right here we go this is a powertrain from a sister driver and uh, there's the spider or rear suspension and if i tilt it forward you can see on mark audio drivers just how thin they are this is a synthetic conex weave and we will keep them low mass and lightweight because for full range drivers uh, you want to create as much mechanical and operational operational efficiency as you can. However, those who are mechanically minded amongst you will immediately notice a technical challenge. Uh, so let's talk it through. So the first thing we can observe is we've got a coil winding and that will sit inside the motor inside the magnetic motor how uh, motor subassembly here so that coil winding is surrounded by a magnetic field electrical signals are fed to it through these flying leads we're creating a circuit it's an alternating signal so the coil is converting electrical energy into mechanical energy and sending it down its body, sending that energy down its body into the cone. However, as soon as you put a, or bond, or fix a component, in this case a spider, to the coil body, you're immediately creating a restriction. You're impeding the coil body's ability to oscillate and vibrate and send that energy down to the cone. In fact, depending on the particular design of the spider, um, you, you get an additional dissipation effect of, of having some of that energy dissipate actually out into the material of the cone. That in itself is a separate video which I might make later because it's, it's a quite a complex uh, set of engineering parameters and properties going on there. But for the purposes of this presentation, you can you can observe that inevitably clamping or adhering a component to something that needs to move and vibrate is going to restrict its ability to perform. So let's just come back to the there we go to the to the to the eleven MS. So what what have I done? Well in order to get the powertrain to operate efficiently and reliably and to balance, the shallow cone profile allows me to bring the coil forward uh, and, and get, a, get a, uh, a much better operational, um, um, operational balance, if you like, between the, 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 the center of action, or what we call the stroke length of the, of the powertrain and how it balances. And we've got that to within such a close parameter that the driver can operate efficiently without the need of that rear suspension. Now, in terms of musical performance, naturally, uh, everybody's, everybody on the planet is an individual and unique. And therefore, we're all going to listen to music and evaluate and judge mus musical performance differently. So I'm going to make more of a general observation here on a technical basis. The combination of um, rear, uh, no rear suspension, reducing the restriction on the coil, the shallow cone profile, which reduces any phase differential between bass sound generated by oscillation and mid and high sound generated from the centre portion and cap of the cone, means that we get a almost pretty much 
seamless transition from bass, middle and high range and back again. Um, a lot of my peers, friends and co-workers and uh, in the industry that have listened to the 11MS all remark and comment on how seamless it, it moves from bass, middle and high and back again. Uh, the sound is very joined up and when you compare it to typical two-way systems we've all become accustomed to that sort of two and multi-way sound where coned bass drivers and mid drivers which are physically proportionally different in size and designed to domed tweeters inevitably there is a along with the the work that the crossover has to do to divide the sound signal we've we've all become accustomed to to a a a, 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 a something of a disconnection between bass and lower mid responses telephonic broadband response which is the vocal area and then right through to high range the 11ms and its smaller sibling the 7ms they they short circuit all of that differential by their design and so the result is a somewhat classic smooth sound so for anybody who's into vocals um, detailed music this could well be the driver for you. Now, as I said earlier, these are observations because naturally you, as the listener and as the custom builder, you'll, you'll decide for yourselves if this is heading in the direction you want to go. But um, my hope is that you're, you will take an interest in this technology as it, it does present some options that you may not have had before. In closing, I'd like to say thank you for watching. Thank you for looking at Mark Audio over the years. And uh, um, thank you for your feedback, for those of you who uh, know Mark Audio well. Myself, Steve Chang, Norio Nakajima, Evan Yu, Thomas Lowe, Dr. Scott Lindgren, and the whole team like to be engaged with end users and through the industry generally and we we wouldn't exist without you so we want to all of us wish you success in 2020 and that we hope every one of you has made it through these difficult times and that you will be safe and well in the future thanks very much for watching